I would like to show you some additional features of the visualization portal and how to find more details about the flood forecast in a specific location. I click on full screen mode to get more area to work with. If I need more, I can even hide the menu. For this forecast, issued the 30th of September, the forecast indicates that streamflow will exceed the Level 2 Severity Level Threshold in Nigeria, so we can click on this area to see more details. I zoom into Nigeria by clicking or scrolling with the mouse. If I click on that catchment area, it gives a hydrograph for the catchment named sub-ID 211733. This graph shows stream flow simulated by the selected model for 10 days ahead starting today and 10 days in the past. The stream flow is always provided for the outlet of the catchment. The different coloured sections indicate the severity level. In green, normal conditions. In yellow, above the two-year return period threshold. Orange, above the five-year return period threshold. And in red, above the 30-year return period threshold. You can also download the data for this catchment. If you click on the link, it begins to download and you can open it in Excel. In the Excel file, you get all forecast settings like issue date, model variable and so on. In the data tab, you get the dates of the simulation with historic information up until the issue date and the forecasted streamflow values with the corresponding severity level. Another way of finding your area of interest is by using the location search under the location tab. There you can search for example for a gauge of interest. In Nigeria there is an important gauge called the Lokodja. If you search for that, you click to select it from the drop down menu. Click the select button to get the graph and the location for that specific gauge. You can download the data in the same way as before. Let's zoom in a bit to look at more features. In the map view, you can add some context layers to help you interpret the information, such as rivers, to show the network of rivers in the area. You can click on catchment boundaries to see the boundaries of the catchments in the selected model. This shows you the resolution of the hydrological model used. Please note the boundaries are different for different models, as you see here. If we zoom in a bit further, we can see even more detail. Clicking on historic water occurrence shows the area that has been covered by water historically. It is the percent of time a given location has been underwater between 1984 and 2018. This gives an indication of which areas might also be flooded in the present situation. This is historic information. It is not part of the current forecast, but it does give an indication of which areas are susceptible. You can also get more information by changing the background map. The open street map shows you where the villages are located and where infrastructure like roads and transportation systems are. This can be important to understand the potential impacts of the forecasted stream flow. Another layer that can help you assess the potential impacts is population density. Essentially, it indicates how many people live in a certain area. If a certain flood hazard is forecasted for an area where many people live, the risk of detrimental impacts is higher than in areas with very few people. If you need further help, in the right hand menu there is a user guide and explanation of the terms used in this portal. There is also a summary of the forecast accuracy and a link to the hydrology tip system where you can find forecasts for previous issue dates. If you need more help, you can always go to the FanFAR support page.